Hi everyone, I want to talk today about this extended fast I'm doing. It's a community three-day fast um, spearheaded by Redmond Real Salt. Um, as many of you know, if you follow along on my journey, um, ever since lowering my carbohydrates, um, taking my paleo approach to a keto mashup, um, I've been doing intermittent fasting. I've implemented it pretty much since the get-go. Um, doing like a 16 hour fast and an eight hour eating window. Um, for the past two and a half years, maybe three years now, time flies when you're having fun. Um, sometimes I haven't, there's been days where I don't fast at all. There's been days where I've had um, semi extended fast, like 24 hours or 36 hours, usually not planned due to traveling or just not feeling well. Um, but this was a three day fast, which the reason I partake, I partook, I'm doing it, I'm actually in the last like six hours right now, is because I've seen a lot of research and articles circulating in my autoimmune wellness groups and um, just from other um, health influencers that I respect, talking about the benefits of a three-day fast to regenerate your immune system, essentially your white blood cells like become new. Um, and that's, as someone with autoimmune disease, that's really interesting to me. Um, because I wonder what kind of benefits I can, you know, get from that. So why did I wait so long to do such a long fast? One, I honestly didn't have the incentive. I, I love food. My work is food. <laughs> um, when I did my shorter fast, you know, I ate when I was hungry. So that's why I ended my fasts. Um, and I knew that this would be a mental challenge. Um, but I'm also someone who's very weary of the fact that I wasn't in a place maybe to do it um, as a woman with you know hormone not they're balanced now but they haven't been in the past and in general they're just very sensitive hormones my body's very sensitive to change um, someone with autoimmune disease someone who's struggled with adrenal fatigue I didn't feel in a safe place to do an extended fast I thought it would be way too stressful on my body um, it would cause you know uh, autoimmune flare or I would feel nauseous or shaky or fatigued I just I didn't want to do any of that that wouldn't make it worth it for me right for me this fast wasn't about restriction it wasn't about weight loss it wasn't about um, you know it was about healing and it was about um, testing my mental fortitude when it came to this um, I feel like it it was a mind game in many ways um, so anyways I'm toward the end of my fast I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. In my head, I thought, I'll do it as long as possible. Um, if I don't feel well, I'll stop. Which, right? There's no pressure. There's no, there was no big deal. What, like, what other consequence other than saying I couldn't do it? Um, and I think that that's a healthy mindset going into it. I think oftentimes people, um, they get a little dogmatic when it comes to these things. Um, also, people can be very judgy about what's allowed in a fast or not. I've had black coffee. I've had tea, I've had a lot of water, I've been using the Redmond Real Salt for my electrolytes. I did take my magnesium before bed, I didn't give that up because I need that to sleep, magnesium glycinate, and I did take some CBD, just a little bit, a milliliter of CBD oil um, in the evenings as well. It's like seven calories, I don't think, for me that doesn't break a fast, also helps me sleep. Um, and I've been feeling really great. So I've definitely released a lot of water, like six pounds of water. I also TMI started my period the day I started the fast, which I think is a really was good for timing wise for my hormones. Um, but yeah, I haven't been shaky. I haven't had stomach aches or any other issues. I've been very surprised at how well I've fared. Um, so benefits of fasting, of course, your body depletes the glycogen stores. You're definitely in ketosis. I mean, whether you were in ketosis before or not, you're gonna be in ketosis during a fast, like once you hit the 20 hour mark. Um, so that's obviously the ben a benefit there. Lipolysis, you're gonna burn um, stored body fat for fuel, not dietary fat, because you're not eating any. Um, then of course the autophagy, which is your cells regenerating. Um, there's been proven benefits there for longevity. I think definitely there's a mental component of it, like the mental fortitude part, which I think that people downplay a lot. Fasting has been used for centuries, I mean by monks, I mean Gandhi used to fast. Um, people have done it um, for like spiritual enlightenment for many years, so it's been interesting really being in my mind and not having work, which is usually cooking and photographing food and talking about food to distract me, so that's been really cool. Um, I felt very like at peace 
during this whole experience, which has been really interesting. Um, so uh, one question I've been getting a ton in my stories is what did I do to prepare for this fast? Now, given that I have been intermittent fasting for so long now, and I have been adhering to um, a ketogenic paleo ancestral health template for so, so long. I mean, I've been paleo, what, for almost five years now? Keto, like almost three of those years. I've done the autoimmune protocol. I know my trigger foods. I don't eat them. Um, I remain um, low carb like 80% of the time. I do practice uh, carb ups because they work for me. Um, I actually did one before I started this fast because I know myself and the days after I do carb ups, I naturally fast anyway. It's like if I have a big carb up, I don't eat almost almost 20 hours afterwards. So I decided to start my fast that way and it didn't make it harder for me. That's how it worked. But yeah, I didn't really change my routine otherwise. Um, so to answer the question that a lot of you do have, if you've never fasted before, how would you start? And I would say, one, do like two weeks of like cleaning up your diet, like omit sugar, omit refined carbohydrates, omit grains, omit inflammatory foods, kind of go paleo, do a whole 30, you know, do a clean keto, do that for two to three weeks, then start slowly implementing 16, eight intermittent fasting where you um, only eat during an eight hour window um, and you fast 16 hours, which most of which you're sleeping. Um, and then start extending that fasting window slowly as you feel good. You know, you don't want to be hangry or shaky. Any of those things happen. You're do I don't think it's worth it. Um, and yeah, and then work your way up. And once you feel confident in that, maybe once you're comfortable at one meal a day for like a few days, you can then work your way up to a three day fast. Um, I don't know if I do one again anytime soon. I don't think it's necessary to do regularly. Um, I think I read a really good article that this, um, you know, health practitioner recommends fast. She does a 12 week program working up to a three day fast, but then only recommends them every six months. And I'm like, that sounds pretty healthy to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, so I would say that work your way up. And also if at any time you don't feel well, stop, you know, and I would say don't use fast as a tool of over restriction, right? Because you guys, you're gonna see this crazy weight loss probably maybe during it, but remember that's a lot of water weight. You literally don't have like any poop in your body or you're not holding onto any extra thing. So, you know, you start eating food again, healthy food, and you, the scale's gonna go up. It's not that you're failing. It's just that you have literally just stuff inside your body. Um, we do need food to survive. Food is delicious, it's not the enemy. Um, like I said, the thing, the fasting is really, a healing tool mental and physical um, and I enjoyed this process I'm really happy uh, that Redmond initiated this and I'm happy I decided to do it I'll be at last minute um, and I think that if you're someone who um, has you know inf inflammatory issues or um, you know maybe even just you struggle with the emotional aspect of healing or feeling like if you can can or can't do things you don't feel powerful enough it's definitely a mental exercise to kind of dig deep into those whys the why the why it's a really it's like excavation of your why you have to really deep dig for that and I think that that's the most powerful part of the fast um, and I always tell people like people say how do you eat this way how do you do this lifestyle you've been doing it for so long and it's my why and my why is to live pain free and to honor this body that carries me through life without inflammation and the uh, all the amazing things I'm able to do now that I'm healthy and to be around for my son um, as long as possible and not just be like this you know mom zombie just to really be part of his life and active and do adventures together and stuff like that so that's my why um, and you gotta find yours so yeah, that's my three-day fast experience and advice. Um, and let me know, hit me up in the comments if it's something that you're going to try one day if you're interested. Um, and also, disclaimer, if you have a history of um, disordered eating, um, adrenal fatigue, and thyroid dysfunction, please, please talk to um, your healthcare um, practitioner before you try any of this. Remember, it's like just because I'm doing it and I'm someone on the internet doesn't mean that you should do it too, right? <laughs>